The pumpkin spice latte has become more than just a beverage. It has become a harbinger of the season. At least that's according to Peter Dukes, the product manager who led the development of the pumpkin spice latte at Starbucks. The pumpkin spice latte has become the quintessential drink of fall. With characteristic spices such as cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg in it, it's no wonder that this beloved latte has become synchronous with the fall season. It seems that creating a pumpkin spice latte recipe on YouTube has become something of a rite of passage for coffee YouTubers and food YouTubers alike. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing James Hoffman's ultimate pumpkin spice latte recipe to Morgan from Morgan Drinks Coffee's pumpkin spice latte recipe. I'm going to help you determine which of these two drinks you should try to make at home this fall season. Let's start with James Hoffman's ultimate pumpkin spice recipe. There are two stages to Hoffman's pumpkin spice syrup. The first being the spice mixture itself, and the second being a liquid pumpkin mixture that is then all combined together to create the pumpkin spice syrup. According to Hoffman's recipe, the spice mixture itself is 25 grams consisting of the following individual spices. 7.5 grams of Vietnamese cassia bark, 7.5 grams of Sri Lankan cinnamon quills, 4.5 grams of Chinese powdered ginger, 3.5 grams of grenadine nutmeg, 1.25 grams of allspice, and finally, 0.75 grams of Sri Lankan cloves. Now take out your spice grinder hiding in the back of your pantry and carefully dump all of your premium measured out spices. Now grind your spices to a fine powder and sift it through a fine mesh sieve. I ran what was left of the spices after the first sift through the grinder again and passed it through the sieve a second time to make sure we're really getting our money's worth on those premium spices. Now what you're left with is a small ramekin embodying what I believe Christmas itself smells like. The next step is to create the pumpkin liquid mixture. This is done by juicing approximately 500 grams of pumpkin. In the original video, Hoffman uses a Jardel pumpkin, but I couldn't find any of those at my local grocery store. Over on his Discord channel, he did mention that the use of a butternut squash would be fine too. Once your pumpkin has been cut up into small cubes, we can move on to the juicing. Pumpkins tend to juice at a 2 to 1 ratio, so 500 grams of your pumpkin of choice should yield roughly 250 grams of juice. I then measured out 250 grams of the butternut squash juice, 250 grams of water, 22 grams of our spice mixture, and 500 grams of demerara sugar. I dumped all the ingredients into a medium sized pot and put it on a low simmer and reduced the syrup until it was nice and thick. After giving the mixture a few minutes to cool down, I strained the mixture through some cheesecloth over a fine mesh sieve. You might have to do this a couple times depending on the amount of syrup you're left with. And now with that out of the way, let's create Morgan's pumpkin spice infused milk. So this recipe uses volumetric measurements instead of weight, which Morgan, if you're watching, please use weight measurements. So this recipe calls for three tablespoons of pumpkin puree, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of ground cloves, a few cracks of black pepper, and three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I first added the milk to the pot over a low heat setting and added in the pumpkin puree to cook off some of the raw pumpkin flavor. I then added in the spice mixture, brown sugar, and vanilla extract, and whisked constantly for about a minute or two, being careful not to let the milk burn. The milk mixture was looking a little grainy to me, so I strained about a cup's worth through cheesecloth on a fine mesh sieve to see if there will be any difference in the final product. And now with that done, let's create the two drinks to compare side by side. Each drink I pulled my standard 2 to 1 ratio with a 20 gram dose of grounds yielding 40 grams of espresso. For the beans, I'm using my favorite airship black apple espresso beans that I'll leave a link to in the description below as well as a discount code for those interested in trying it out. 
For Hoffman's recipe, I added in 15 grams of the pumpkin spice syrup for a 240 ml drink per his recommendation in the recipe. And for Morgan's recipe, I steamed half of the pumpkin spice infused milk and poured that into the espresso. Now it's time for the taste test. Alright, I'm here with my friends Catherine and Claire and they're gonna do a blind taste test. I know which one is which, um, but they're gonna be testing each drink for the first time. So we'll start with the Starbucks pumpkin spice latte. Definitely tastes like the Starbucks one that I had before. It's very sweet. How do you like it? This tastes like a latte. Okay. Um, <laughs> doesn't taste like anything. Like I don't taste anything pumpkin to be honest. Yeah, it's just like a sweet latte to me with like a hint of like maybe cinnamon or something. Yeah. All right, what's next? You can take this, this one. one. This one. Is it the same one or? They're different. Okay. They're, these three are all different. Oh. This one's not bad. Wow. There's a lot of spices in this one compared to what we just had. Very nutty taste. Um, a very thick, foamy. This one tastes kind of similar to this one, to the Starbucks, the Starbucks one, one. Mm -hmm. except that this one has a lot more spices in it, but I can't tell what it is. Mm. Oh, this one smells so strong already. After a lot of deliberation between the two of them, they finally came to the agreement that they preferred James Hoffman's PSL recipe first, the Starbucks PSL second, Morgan's filtered PSL third, and Morgan's unfiltered PSL last. Here are some of my concluding thoughts about these two recipes. From a texture standpoint, I'm going to have to give this one to James Hoffman, as filtering the syrup through a cheesecloth and fine mesh sieve definitely helped to get rid of any sediments or grainy textures in the final drink. Morgan's PSL recipe definitely had a bit of a grainy texture to it. If you were to recreate this recipe, I would suggest filtering the infused milk through a cheesecloth as I found that it did help give the drink a much more pleasant and smooth texture. When it comes to taste, I think that two tablespoons of brown sugar in Morgan's recipe wasn't quite enough for the two cups of milk used. I would probably add another 10 to 15 grams of a sugar syrup into each of these drinks to give it some of much needed sweetness. Hoffman's syrup on the other hand had felt a lot more balanced. It had a good amount of sweetness without being overwhelmingly sweet, and I think the best way of describing the use of the much higher quality ingredients in Hoffman's recipe feels like comparing grape juice to wine. The added complexity of these imported spices might appeal to those that aren't looking for a traditional pumpkin spice latte. This recipe also has the added benefit of being a syrup, which means you can use it on all sorts of other things from a sauce for pumpkin spice pancakes to a drizzle over some vanilla ice cream. And for that reason, Hoffman's pumpkin spice latte recipe is the winner. So finally, is it worth it? Are either of these recipes worth making at home? Honestly, unless you're really into that strong pumpkin cinnamony type of flavor, it might not be worth going through all the effort to recreate these recipes at home. If you do want to try it out, Morgan's recipe is definitely more reminiscent of a traditional pumpkin spice, while Hoffman's borders on the exotic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.